So we are joined by Randy Kirk, best-selling author of the Elon Musk method, the Elon Musk madness, no, uh, the Elon mission. Musk mission. Uh, mission. mission, yes, yes, and uh, many other good books about all kinds of topics. Uh, Randy, uh, thanks for coming back on. Absolutely. It's always fun to get in <sighs> your way. Be in your, to be in your way. No, to join your way. I'm not sure what mm. So, uh, Ron Wilson says, you guys are a great team. Please do more shows together. Should we do that? Okay. Here we are. I'm Brian. <laughs> Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. Oh, 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 oh. So this week I wanted to talk about some of the great comments I saw in terms of utility, purpose, uh, possible use cases for the Tesla bot. Now, I know you've had some great ideas, uh, but I'm just going to share some with you. Uh, Gary Menenzies says uh, Tesla should get the bot uh, to plug in Tesla's at superchargers as a start. So when RoboTaxi switch gets flipped, they have a means of automatically charging all those RoboTaxis. And this is a very popular comment. I've seen, oh, probably five or six of these at least. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think you'd have to equip it with a machine gun. Uh, to keep people from stealing it and taking it down the street or some kind of defensive mechanisms um, or have, uh, you know, uh, one one robot there that would be the security guard to secure all the rest. But when I saw the comment in your in your comments from the last time, uh, that was the first thing that came to my mind is, boy, that's an expensive toy to have out there filling uh, filling the, uh, the, t the gas tank. So how do we secure it? Make sure it doesn't get uh, hurt or ripped. Uh, hurt, I'm more worried about. Stolen, less so, because uh, it would be bricked. You could scrap it for parts. But uh, just uh, have it uh, tether itself to uh, a concrete block when not in use. So just clip in and I don't know. There's, there's, those are concerns, but a lot of uh, superchargers are in premium locations. And if it's a Tesla bot specific, uh, FSD specific charging station, there's no reason it would even need to have people there. So it could be a secure location, That's not true. for people. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, James says, so at this point, we should be able to build a fairly working C-3PO. Elon should make one of his bots look like that and provide it with voice interaction like that. That'd be, I mean, all you got to do is paint it gold. I can do that. Yeah, why not? Oh, I'm all about the conversation. I have been, I think I mentioned this at least three or four weeks ago, is uh, with ChatGPT now, I mean, quite honestly, when I'm on BARD or ChatGPT or whatever, I do, I do, there's a, it's hard to not think that there's a, not a human at the other end. So I, I find myself, I'll ask it three or four questions and I feel like, well, should I ask it another question? I mean, I kind of been taking up a lot of its time. You know, it's like, it's like it drives me crazy that I have those feelings while I'm working on that. Well, so that got me thinking about, about uh, uh, you know, Optimus. And of course, if it can respond, if, it, if you can have a conversation, that's just me great. So I picture it kind of like this. So I am teaching it to do a particular task. And I say, okay, so uh, drill it right over there. And it says, are, are you sure? <laughs> and right. I go, no, I'm, I'm really pretty sure that it's got to be two inches to the right of where you have it now. And the bot goes, yeah, but the last time we did this, I mean, can you, <laughs> this conversation could be just as normal as you're training an employee. And uh, I've always said that I, I, when I, I want one of these things to be uh, in my home to give me great massages. Right. Because I can say to the right or to the left or harder are softer and the bot can say, well, you know, but this, this particular move I'm using is really good for releasing that tension in your back. And then you right. go, yeah, but right now that just hurts. You know, so it's just like, I right. think, yes, I think, I think conversations are going to be great. So uh, Swamp Castle says if it can load a dishwasher, close washing machine, take out the trash and serve up cans of cold beer, you already have every single household wanting one. <laughs> Domestic yes, servant. Well, yes. I think that there is a case to be made for a home servant. I think it's surprise personally, I think it's surprisingly less than most people are saying. The home It depends the home, on the price. Yeah, and it's, it, the the economy in a home today is so 
minimal in terms of the amount of work needed to be done. Now, when you got kids running around or other dependent individuals, seniors and things like that, oh my gosh, yes, I can see a million opportunities for a robot if there are anybody in the house that needs to be managed. Um, but a lot of homes where there's only a single person or a couple, uh, I think uh, I think the, the use case is limited other than that great massage. I'm holding, I mean, there's nothing out there that can give you a massage like Optimus will be able to do. It, well, Optimus can look in the fridge, see what you have, and recommend menu items that yes, could be made true. from what's in your fridge. You don't have to deal with an app and type it all in and think about it. TeslaBot would be great as a garbage man, etc. all automated. You've seen how automated uh, those trucks already are. They, it used to be a three-man job when it was just metal cans, and now it's one driver, and they seldom have to get out, and the big robot arms are doing all the heavy lifting, quite literally. And if it's now self-driving, has enough cameras, and for the oversized and odd stuff, this, this could be a use case. Yeah, I think that the, um, what would you call it, the attendant to any large piece of uh, moving equipment like that is probably a big use case for the future. Uh, a lot of these are dangerous. Uh, a lot of them are given to the potential for making an error. Let's talk about cranes that have fallen on buildings or, uh, uh, you know, uh, things of that nature. So, yeah, I, c I could definitely see the potential, even if the crane, let's say, or the truck was automated, that the bot would be a, uh, a backup uh, for automation. It would be a backup. In fact, come to think of it, how about this? Maybe you need a little robot in your uh, autonomous cars. Just a really, you know, because it wouldn't be that expensive for the oddball situation where something happens in front of the car and the car just has never seen it before. Lights happened in San Francisco with the uh, with the uh, competition. Um, they've had uh, circumstances where they've had stalled autonomous cars sitting in the middle of the road and nobody knew what to do with them. But if you had an uh, if you had a autonomous robot in there to be able to now deal with that situation, I don't hmm. know. Probably I don't true. know. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know on that one because especially if it's running the same software, it would yeah, that's right likely. Hmm. Yeah, but it could uh, get Dan, out and do something. It could actually literally make a decision yes. to open a door or close a door or mm. lift the car up or I don't know. For mobility uses, it could also help the driver or passenger uh, with loading into the vehicle, with dealing with uh, a wheelchair or walker or other accessibility items. Yes. That would be a good use. And for grocery shopping, some people don't want to, they still want to go to the grocery store. Um, it could make that whole journey a lot easier. If I had a bot just to water my 300 plants in my yard, that would obviate the headaches of my drip irrigation system. That would be huge. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a very simple task, but it's one. Hey, listen, I, if the if the bot was just had a green thumb, because I have a notorious black thumb, so if I could hire a bot to come in once a week, I didn't even need to own it just hire a bot to come in once a week and, and do the watering and an anal analysis to see what I'm doing wrong in killing my poor plants. And for that matter, uh, it could take care of a lot of tasks uh, related to house sitting. Yes, that's true. Yeah. It could walk the dogs while you're out of town. It could walk the, the dogs when I'm in town. The main, right. reason I don't, the main reason I don't own a dog is I don't want to walk it. <laughs> <laughs> John suggests the test will be if Tesla Mexico is laid out with Tesla bot workstations, for example, piece placement for large robots within the cage, something too dangerous for flesh and blood. That's a good, that's a good example. Are they designing Giga Mexico with the idea of the bot being an integral element? So I don't remember this quote, and I should probably make uh, again. We've mentioned him three times now, but we should probably <laughs> we should probably make. Oh, that was on the previous video. We should probably get Scott Walter to to pull this portion of the video up. He said that there was a comment made at the uh, discussion of Giga Mexico that half of the employees at Giga Mexico will be Optimi. Wow. And I Maybe. don't remember this quote, but we, we need to find the quote. 
I would not be surprised at all that Giga Mexico is being designed specifically with Optimi around it. We know that the unboxed process, we, that was definitely stated that the unboxed process is taking Optimus into consideration. So yeah, 50% of the people in Mexico at that new plant, yeah, I, I don't see why not. Gareth says, I think there'll be 20,000, but that's with basic programs. Specialist functions require plugins. Tesla could charge a lot more for them, like high torque industrial units, deep sea units, space units. Yeah, again, I don't see why the plugins, I, I'm, I might just be misunderstanding the use of plugins, but it would seem like the software will always have 100% of what every robot can do. Um, so uh, every robot will be capable of all those things once the one robot becomes capable of those things. But maybe there's a use case for plugins and I'm just not getting it. Um, um, on the other side of the coin, I definitely think there will be third party as well as maybe Tesla accessories. So, you know, putting a sticky thing on the end of a finger because it needs a sticky thing to do some kind of action or uh, having an a finger extension because it needs a longer finger or, um, you know, I could, I, something like he's talking about where it's a deep sea environment, it might need a special head uh, that, you know, doesn't get wet or so. I don't know. So, yeah, I could see sure. lots of third party situations coming up. And it could have a variety uh, of, you know, drill bits, so to speak, right. uh, for its hands, uh, including the thing longer, as you suggested. I call it the thing longer. The, the last one, and this is a, a four parter. We'll go through it one part at a time. This is uh, A.O. Murdoch suggests more uses. One explosive ordnance disposal yeah. yeah well of course we have robots doing that now so that would be one of the more obvious ones but the robots that ha are doing it now are primarily just to pick it up and move it to a new location but if you yeah. can send a robot in who can actually make the decision whether to cut the red wire or the blue wire that would <laughs> potentially save a lot of lives of <laughs> bomb disposal people uh medical assistant a bot has got to be better when drawing blood than some of the medical assistants I've encountered over the years. <laughs> yes, well, there's no question. The medical assistant thing is that when I do my some of my videos, one of the most common things that comes up is how many places a robot's going to be able to help with the infirm or even people that are temporarily infirm. So, you know, helping people to walk when they're, you know, uh, I, I had uh, some surgery a, a, a year and a half ago when I needed to be able to uh you know walk down the hall and not fall and and then come back and not not be out of breath and stuff like that and go dif different distances each day and it's yeah a nurse was fine at that and i appreciated having that nurse to help me but a bot should be able to do that job quite handily and especially with the shortage of workers we're finding yes. in the healthcare industry at the time It'd be great if the bots were doing all the lowest level stuff so all the humans could move up one rung I would just like a bot that knows better than to wake me up four times in the middle of the night while I'm in the hospital to pr push, prod, and, and prick. You know, uh, let me sleep all night and do all that stuff at 6 a.m. if you want. <laughs> uh, restroom attendant, at least the bot wouldn't be offended by the noises and smells I make from my bathroom stall. <sighs> Bathroom attendant, that's a great one. Yeah. For that matter, cleaning up any kind of biohazard, it yes. could, it, you know, you've seen some of the areas filled with needles and um, human refuse, if you will. Uh, this would be a safe way to deal with that. Yes, it would. Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, Elon's statement that he's looking for things that are dangerous, uh, are repetitive, are boring. Um, you know, that is a, a dangerous occupation, not necessarily the restroom attendant, but I can't <laughs> imagine anybody actually wanting that job unless you were quite desperate for tips. There are, it's, it's, a, I've seen it. Uh, it's all <laughs> I, I know. To, I and uh, the last one, military drill sergeant recruits would not be as offended if they're yeah. called a maggot by a Tesla bot drill sergeant. 
Uh, I think that one will, will, will still need the human touch. Yeah, I, I think the p part of the point is to offend. <laughs> right. I think, I think that's built in. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're moving in the correct direction on that one. We could also ask the drill sergeants to be nicer. I mean, I don't it's think true. that's going to happen either. Oh, Randy, we got through another one. I don't know. In the comments, I think people should tell us other uses that we didn't think of for this amazing bot. Uh, because there are, it appears, going to be a couple of use cases where it would fit. And I would point out that it doesn't have to do everything before it's rolled out. This is like, uh, you know, full self-driving has to work everywhere all the time. If it only had to work in gated communities, uh, it would already be out. If it only had to work on rails, it would be out. Those applications were solved ages ago. Maybe not the, clo the gated community, but that is a place where it could work today. So this only has to work in specific use cases before it's got utility to those industries. So it'd be pretty interesting to see what the plan is. So I'd like to have some comments too of things that the, that the folks think it can't <clears throat> do. So the other day when I did that one on t-shirt loading into the printer, um, people were saying, no, but that bot with those fingers, it won't be able to pick up cloth, that this is a very hard task. So we're trying to address that right now. How easy or hard would it be for the optimist, not any other bot, how easy or hard would the optimist have a, a time of picking up a t-shirt and moving it? So other kinds of things like that that are large jobs, large opportunities for the bot that you think right now it can't do and why? Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, uh, guys, uh, big thanks to my patrons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. Keep the channel running quite literally. Can't do it without you. For everyone else, subscribe, like, and definitely leave a comment because there's definitely things you got to let us know. What did we miss? What did we misunderstand? So stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots the next time I convince Randy to come join me and talk about all kinds of fun stuff. We didn't talk about water bottles. <laughs> uh.